What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream today. We're going to call this Arsenal Therapy Session today because being an Arsenal fan, sometimes you need therapy to deal with watching this team. Yesterday was a pathetic, timid, lame performance. And it was basically like playing against 11 cones on the pitch. Do you know what? Manchester City will have a harder training session today in Manchester than they had yesterday in a Premier League game against Arsenal. They they might as well have took their shirts off, put them back on the peg and just said, just save them for the Champions League game in a week. You don't even need to wash them. Embarrassing performance. You know, we're the only team that can lose 1-0 and somehow you feel embarrassed. The scoreline may not suggest it, but the performance was just ridiculous. It was a waste of time turning up. We just accepted the 1-0 defeat and just laid there and took it. Big up everyone in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Somehow we'll get through it, people. Why not the Arteta Out show this? Saying, What's the point right now? What's the point? Uh, I've done that show many times. It gets mixed responses. The manager, the, the, they're pushing the PR. They're giving it our next season. Pep Guardiola's doing interviews saying, oh, with a few signings, that Arsenal team can challenge for the league. Pep, stop trolling. I know it's your mate. What he should have done yesterday is said to Arteta, look, I'm going to put you out of your misery now. Take your Arsenal top off, throw it in the dressing room and come back on the coach to Manchester. That's what he should have done yesterday and just said, just, just, just stop doing it now. You're not the guy for this. Yeah, you open up against Man City, you get destroyed, but keeping the doors closed for the whole 90 minutes, you're definitely not going to get anything out of the game. You go 1-0 down after a minute and 45 seconds. There's got to be some stage where you say, right, now we're going to go for it. Last 20 minutes, 1-0 down against Man City, right, now we're going to have a go. We just sat there for 90 minutes and said, well, you know, 1-0 is not the, not the worst result in the world. Let's get out of here with 1-0. And then Arteta addresses it up in the press conference. Oh, you know, Manchester City are this exceptional team and you've got to be almost perfect to get anything out of a performance against them. Come on, come on, listen. Manchester City beating Arsenal is not my problem. They are a far better football team than Arsenal. And if they'd have beat us under normal circumstances, I would have held my hands up and just said they're a better team than us. But the fact they came to Arsenal and just strolled through that game, went through the, you know, just went through the motions. They went 1-0 up. 60 minutes. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne, you come off, mate. You have a rest. You know, we'll save you for the Champions League game. Aguero's on the bench. Nah, we're not even going to use you today, mate. Relax. You can play on Wednesday. What? No point wasting you against these. The game's already won. Manchester City didn't feel one bit threatened in that entire game. This is a team that got battered by Leicester, that drew to West Brom, that had to work hard to beat Everton. They should have had to come to Arsenal and work hard to beat us. That is my biggest problem. They 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 bullied us the whole game yesterday. That is my biggest problem. Hit the likes before we begin. Let's get this video started right. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already as well. Omar said, we look so petrified of them. It was embarrassing. I mean, terrible, terrible. Literally, I hadn't even settled into the game and the game was pretty much over. You know, tw as you're saying here, 2021 and we are watching Granit Xhaka and Mohamed El Nenny in the Arsenal midfield. That is actually... When I think back throughout all the years, I think that's the worst Arsenal midfield I've ever seen in my entire life. And yet this is this is the team, this is the trust the process, this is a team that's going to get us in the title race. Not with them. I, I, listen, it, it probably would have been a better video if I just let the noodles on camera. It probably would have been talking about this. But we got to do therapy, people. we got to try and see some light at the end of the tunnel, you know. Even Pepe did an interview. I mean, Aubameyang. Aubameyang, my friend. I've defended this guy so much, Aubameyang. And I, and I do to a certain extent. But you're the captain. You come out and do an interview when you score a hat-trick against Lee Jair because everything's rosy in the garden when you've just scored the hat-trick and everyone's praising you and you're smiling. Yesterday, I thought Aubameyang did absolutely nothing in that game. My problem was... I didn't even see the work. 
I saw times where there was a long ball and, and John Stones is just going for the header and Aubameyang is just standing there watching him head the ball. You're always told from a kid, even if you can't win that header, jump and try and put him off. He's just standing there. And the worst part in the game, Aubameyang goes on that run in the last 20 minutes. And Aubameyang's a man that we always associated with speed. And John Stones just jogs next to him like, listen, mate, you I don't know what's happened to your speed, but you're not going nowhere. And then he just barges him over on the floor and just puts him on his back. And I'm like, yo, that is embarrassing. You know, that if he did that to me, the next time he got the ball, I'd two-foot him. I'd write him off just to let him know, at least you're having a bit of a tough battle. He just put him down and said, sit down, little man. You ain't going nowhere. And then the fact he doesn't even come out and do the interview after the game, you're the captain, bro. Uh, do you only sing when you're winning, yeah? You score a hat-trick, you do the interview, we get beat, no one hears from you. Not good enough. Not good enough. Let's face it, Aubameyang is Arsenal captain because he was our best player. Arguably still is, I don't know. Saka, maybe, I don't know. He, he's not the captain because of his um, leadership qualities. But the problem is, who is the leader of this football team? People say Tierney, I, I don't know. I don't really see a captain in this team at the moment. But Aubameyang's got to go on better than that. He's got to conduct himself in a better manner than that. Step up, take the interview say that we weren't good enough, say all the usual stuff, but at least stand up and be counted. He went hiding, man. I want to see the captain talk. The basics are hard nowadays, Kurt. His passion and fight for the badge is only present in a couple of players. And as I said yesterday, man, the, a lot of players join this football club now for the wrong reasons. You're either a younger player and you view Arsenal as a stepping stone or you're an older player looking to wind down your career and pick up a big contract. We don't have enough of those players who are like 25, 26 at their prime and, you know, they're committing their future to Arsenal. That is the problem. That man said Obama ghost Yang. He disappeared yesterday. Absolutely disappeared. Um, there's a number of things to look at with yesterday's performance that, that I was so disappointed with. Uh, some people have said, oh, what did you expect? It's Man City, you know, they're, they're now 18 games in a row. They've won in all competition. You know, they are this machine at the moment. Two things that bothered me about yesterday. Number one, Manchester City didn't even play that well, right? Number two, Raheem Sterling scoring a header, unmarked on the edge of the box. Raheem Sterling is five foot eight. He's one of the smallest players on the pitch. Rob Holden is six foot two and he's standing next to him watching him jump in the air and head that ball in. This is a guy we've just given a new four-year contract to. And I do not understand how players get away with what they do at Arsenal. You know, how do they get away with it? How is Mikel Arteta not, ca not calling him out after the game? That's not good enough. It's not acceptable. People saying here Sterling's actually five foot six. There you go. I've made him taller than he actually is. The man's five foot six, winning headers against a six foot two centre back. And that's after a minute and 45 seconds of the game. And that and we're supposed to trust that this defender is is gonna do something for the next four years. Rob Holding's been at the club for five years and he's not good enough. He's a bang average centre back. Yeah, he'll give you a few decent performances here and there. But overall, he's not good enough. But as Emmanuel Petit said, there is a crowd of players at this football club where if you stay in the shadows long enough, you can just be at the club for years and no one will put any pressure on you or ask questions. The same way that Mohamed Elneny and Granit Xhaka is our midfield. How have we got to the point that that is our midfield? You know, it's not good enough. Arteta sets up to lose. They were happy with 1-0 yesterday. You could see the general attitude of the team. Why did we not make a substitution till the 72nd minute? And then we brought El Nenny off in the 86th minute of the game. Danny Ceballos. Danny Ceballos has had two of his best games in a row for Arsenal against Benfica and Leeds. Yesterday, he drops him and brings him on for four minutes. Nicolas Pepe is in one of his best runs of form since he's been at Arsenal. You drop him against Leeds, a team where, you know, he had revenge to get in that game and he could have scored goals and, and boosted his confidence further. You drop him. 
And then we go to Benfica and you bring them on for 15 minutes against a team that had one of the highest defensive lines that I've seen all season. And guess what you do? And I've seen this happen so many times in football. The manager puts him back in for one of the most difficult games of the season. The guy's been playing left wing and performing. And yesterday you played him right wing. Why? Why? Can somebody tell me why Nicolas Pepe played, played right wing yesterday? When Bakaya Saka is in the form of his life on the right wing and Pepe is in the best form of his Arsenal career on the left. But yesterday we swapped sides. Why did that happen? Why did it not change after 20 minutes when you could see it wasn't working? I don't understand what this manager is doing tactically on the football pitch. And yesterday for me was, I, I, can, I can actually accept losing 3-0 to Aston Villa more than I can accept that defeat yesterday. For the simple reason, sometimes in football, another team just plays better than you, just plays far better. When Aston Villa turned up that day and beat us 3-0, they were superb that day and we didn't play well and they just hammered us. Sometimes you just got to put your hands up and say, yo, Grealish, them, man, they ripped us apart. We played yesterday without trying to win. We could have got a draw yesterday and gone out of there and took a point. Not good enough. The tactics are woeful. And I've said it over and over again and I will say it now. I do not believe that this manager is good enough to get this football club back into the Champions League. I don't think he's good enough. I didn't want to call the show the Arteta Out show today. I've done it over and over again. But I can't see anything in this manager that makes me believe he's getting us back to the Champions League, let alone challenging for the title. No style of football. I don't know what a style of football is. One week we press, the next week we play out from the back. The next week, we put 30 crosses into the box. The substitutions. He is literally Arsene Wenger part two. Literally Arsene Wenger part two. I'm going to wait until the 70th minute before I even think about making a change. Man City were 1-0 up. They made a change in the 60th minute and they were winning the game. If anything, Pep could have sat there and gone, I'm winning the game, I won't change it. But top managers are proactive, not reactive. And this is what this manager isn't. He waits for something to happen. Substitutions are woeful. Style of football is non-existent. His man management skills are terrible. Yeah, Pepe, he's got so much favouritism. Hector Bellerin plays every game, no matter how bad he plays. Rob Holding, four-year contract, bang average. Um, big up for the super chat. Thank you very much. Said, don't like Louise, but I think he is the only leader. Goffrey, uh, I agree. I think he is the only leader, but is he the right leader? This is the problem. But he is the only one with leadership skills. Rion, what a great point you've made it. Matteo Guendouzi and Lucas Torreira, two players out on loan at the moment. That is a better midfield than the midfield we had yesterday. That's a fantastic point. We got two midfielders out on loan better than the ones starting. What is that all about, people? Matteo Guendouzi walks into that midfield. So does Torreira. Granite Xhaka looks half decent when Thomas Partey's babysitting him, let's be honest. When Xhaka has the responsibility himself, he's not up to it. He's not up to the task. He's not good enough. He's been at the club for years. We haven't touched Champions League since Granite Xhaka came to this club. Since he's been at the club a full season, we've never qualified for the Champions League. Not good enough. Mohamed Elneny yesterday. Absolutely dreadful. Dreadful. And you know what, Naveen, you're right. Why is no one calling out Tierney? I thought Tierney was poor yesterday. Poor. His crossing was poor. His passing, even it summed him up at the end. 30 seconds to go. We got the ball, last counter-attack. He kicked it straight out of play trying to pass it to Aubameyang. He had a shocker yesterday. Mares was putting him to the sword as well. Didn't know how to deal with Mares at all. Um, shocking. Absolutely shocking. The manager... We're going to get into the player rating shortly. Uh, we are. Gwendouzi may have a bit of diva in him, but watching him play at Arsenal and Berlin, he's proven he wants to win. This manager can't deal with a bit of attitude and a bit of talk. He can't deal with it. Big up my boy Broads TV. Go and check out his channel, people. Tierney probably being rushed back, yeah? I mean, yesterday, why didn't Cedric play over Hector Bellerin? You know? Why didn't he play over Hector Bellerin? I don't get it. Why play? This is what I don't understand. 
Pepe's had a good little partnership with Kieran Tierney on that left-hand side. Pepe, when he plays with Hector Bellerin at right-back, their partnership is non-existent. They don't link up well. Saka's done well on the right with Bellerin behind him. But guess what? We're playing Man City. I'll change them. Why? Why? Why did he change it yesterday, people? Why did the manager change it? I have no idea. It didn't make sense. Big up South London's finest. Smash the likes, people. Subscribe. Road to 30k. Let's look at one or two details before we get into the player ratings. This is Arsenal therapy, people. That's what we're calling it today. Arsenal therapy. Um, yesterday was was just shocking. These are stats from, from yesterday's game. Manchester City had 15 shots, 55% possession. We had one shot on target. One shot on target, people, in 90 minutes. And that shot is basically a cross from Kieran Tierney that was on target. So it ended up being considered a shot. We made Edison do absolutely nothing. They didn't need a goalkeeper yesterday. We were non-existent in the attack. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing performance. One shot on target. How are you supposed to win a game with one shot on target, people? Like, how? How are you supposed to win that game? We did absolutely nothing to try and beat them. You know, one corner, one corner, one shot on target. Pathetic is the word. That was a pathetic, timid, embarrassing performance. In all my years of being an Arsenal fan, I have never watched Arsenal play a game of football where I genuinely felt like they had no intention of trying to score and try and win. Never, never in my life. Yesterday, I saw a team that was trying not to get battered. You know, yeah, I would expect Sheffield United or West Brom, bottom teams in the league, to play like that against City. City didn't have a recognised striker on the pitch. They had De Bruyne false nine. He didn't play amazing. He was OK. And we just let him go through the motions, just stroll through that game. We did absolutely nothing. And it summed up the season, people. It summed up where we are as a, as a football team right now. We are dreadful. We are absolutely dreadful at this moment in time. Um, it, it is, it's literally, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. How can we, how can we accept what is going on at this football club? You know, Leicester fan here, smashing Man City this season ain't for everyone. Listen, man, you've got a good manager, you know, you know how to, he, he's fixing things. Brendan Rodgers is a fantastic manager. I would take him at Arsenal today if we could get him. If we were a big enough football club, we'd go for him in the summer, but we won't. We won't. I'm f I'm scared of Thursday night, bruv. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Benfica were poor, but we couldn't beat them. We drew one all. Imagine if Benfica actually turn up and perform half decent. You know, this could be Olympiacos part two. You just don't know. You don't know. You can't trust this team. You cannot trust this team. One bit. Oh, don't get me started. This has been my argument so much, James. So much. The argument Robbie tried to have and, and Kevin Campbell when they came on last week. Arsenal's squad is not as good as the teams above them. This is what they were they were throwing at me. I said, hang on a minute. West Brom, not West Brom, West Ham don't have a better team than us. You know? They don't have a better team than us. How comes they how comes they're challenging for Champions League? West West Ham. You know why? Look at the Premier League table people. Look at this. Look where look where we are. One win in five. That that nice run that we had in January when everyone started hyping us. That's kind of gone out the window now, hasn't it? It's all right beating Brighton and West Brom and teams like that. But now we've played a few decent teams. We can't do nothing. We are... Look where West Ham are. West Ham are 11 points clear of Arsenal. 11 points. With the same games played. They've scored more goals than us as well. Unbelievable. Are you telling me David Moyes and West Ham? Is their team anything special? That is organisation. It's a game plan. When you watch West Ham now, they know what they're doing. They get the ball up to Antonio. They've got Jared Bowen and Ben Rahman, and these guys running off them. They've got Suchek and Rice in the middle, hard to beat. Uh, Jesse Lingard gets in the little pockets. Kufal at right back, solid. Diop and Dawson, solid. Cresswell, Fabianski, their team is not full of stars. They're just a hard-working unit that are a reflection of what their manager wants. 
13 wins this season. They've only lost six. They're hard to break down. We've lost 11 games. We've lost 11 games this season. Manchester City have lost two. You know, it's embarrassing. That is, em We've lost more games than we've won this season. Yet people keep telling me how, how much better our defence is on the basis that we haven't conceded that many goals. But we're losing more games than we were before. You know, it do I'd rather lose five games 3-0 than 11 games 1-0. Ultimately, the team that have lost five games have conceded more. But I'd rather lose five than, than 11. There's no... The, the, this thing that because we've conceded less goals, we're a better defence, that doesn't work for me. We've lost 11 games of football. Last season was one of our worst ever Premier League seasons. We lost 10 games the whole season. We've still got 13 games left. We're going to end up probably losing 15 games this season. Which teams near the relegation zone lose 15 games? We're shocking. We can't score goals. We've got 31 goals this season in 25 games. Man United have got 53 goals this season. 53. 53. Liverpool got 45. We're way off it. We are way off it, people. Way off it. The manager is not good enough. The manager is not good enough, people. He took a job. He had every right to take the job. Why would he say no to the job, Mikel Arteta? You know? Why would he? It's his first ever job in football. You get offered the Arsenal job. And let, let me say this, people, and I, I, always, um, I always try and say this. I'm a very positive person, but I'm also a realist. This team right now, under this manager, is going nowhere. It's going nowhere. Goffrey, thank you very much for the super chat. I'm always positive, but please... Have at every position better players than West Ham. I like a midfielder, Partey and Matteo Guendouzi. By the way, really scared for Benfica. I mean, you look at that West Ham team, the ones that stand out, I think that um, Suchek and Declan Rice, one of them next to Thomas Partey we would take. Kufal at right back as well. I agree, Kufal is, is good. Um, there's not many others. I'd probably take Diop at centre-back next to Gabriel. He's a bit of a, a bit of a beast. Not many others. Fabianski, we we dashed him away years ago. He was second choice. I wouldn't take Cresswell over Tierney. I wouldn't take Jared Bowen over Sako. I wouldn't take Jesse Lingard, really. Although Lingard is playing very well at the moment, to be fair. He probably he probably would get in our team at the moment in that number 10 role. But you know, Bamiang and, and Saka and Pepe, we got better players than them, but they're, they're playing as a unit. Bro, Antonio is an absolute problem. I, do you know what? I would take Antonio at Arsenal, even as a backup plan. You know, like, sometimes you need that plan B off the bench, someone different. Imagine bringing on Antonio off the bench. He is a beast, mate. He's a beast. Um, but, yeah, where do we go from here, people? I suppose, moving forward, we have to focus on this Benfica game. The league is out. The, the league was out the window a while ago, let's be honest. Um, the league was done a little while back. Yesterday just further confirmed it. Um, but but the, the league season's done. But this Europa League, are you guys confident that we're going to beat Benfica right now? Are you guys confident? I'm definitely not. I would take Antonio at Arsenal all day long. Uh, you once told me you didn't rate Declan Rice. Has your opinion changed or do you rate our current midfield that low? I think, you know what is? Let me tell you where I'm at with Declan Rice. I have to admit he's better than I thought he was. I think the numbers and the value that was being linked with him was too high. I was hearing 70 million for Declan Rice. I'm sorry, he ain't no 70 million pound player. You know, so, he, but he's better than what we've got. So he has improved, but he's not worth that. Curtis, are you kidding? Antonio is better than Aubameyang. Jeez, people are... I, I, nah, I don't think he is. Not as a goal scorer. His all-round game is is very effective, though. You know, I would take Antonio at Arsenal, though, definitely. Zero confidence for Thursday. Let's get in the player ratings, people. You guys put them in. Um, sometimes... Sometimes I'm, I'm not sure until um, you lot guide me a little bit. Obviously, doing the watch-along, you don't get to fully see everyone. We start with Burnt Leno. Couldn't do anything about the goal, really. Made a couple of decent saves. I think Leno is a standard six. No mistake, nothing exceptional. 
Uh, but Leno deserves a six. Uh, I wouldn't give him a five. I don't think he could do anything about the goal. It was ultimately um, it was ultimately poor defended. And these player ratings are going to be very difficult because I don't think anybody in our team is going to get higher than a six today um, before we even get into it because nobody really did anything. Let's go to Hector Bellerin. Yellow card. Didn't link up with Pepe. Didn't help him. I thought Sterling started ripping him apart second half. He's not good enough. He's not good enough for this football club, Hector Bellerin. I don't know what Hector Bellerin has to do before this manager decides that he, he needs to leave. You know, if this manager stays at this football club, he better get brave with this guy in the summer because I've personally, I've had enough of him. I've absolutely had enough of this guy. What more does this guy have to do wrong before we decide that he's not good enough to be here? You know? He offers nothing going forward. Defensively, he gets ripped apart. He's nowhere near good enough. He should have been sold years ago, this guy. What would you give Hector Bellerin for yesterday? People are giving him a naught. Uh, oh, mate, did you guys see that, that clip that's going up, by the way, where Bellerin just kicks the ball out of play under no pressure? Literally nobody is, is near him, and he just kicks the ball out. He just kicks the ball out of play for no reason. Bellerin used to live with Arteta and his wife. He did. It's his stepson, bro. Big up C, um, people. Hit the like button. Disappointed Martinelli not getting game time. Bellerin a two for sure. I'd give Indomi 10 out of 10. I don't know what this guy has got over Mikel Arteta. What did he find out when he was living with him? Because I don't know how he gets in the team. Bro, you would love to play football against Bellerin. Bellerin's getting left wingers new contracts for fun. I'm telling you. Every left winger, decent left winger has ripped him up. Neto destroyed him. Grealish literally wrapped him up and just, just, just sent him off, you know. Sterling was ripping him. I'm I'm giving Hector Bellerin a two. I'm giving him a two. I thought he was shocking yesterday. He just he just does absolutely nothing. He kicks the ball out of play. He is a terrible footballer. Terrible. Uh, Rob Holding, Bobby Bolding. To me, that Raheem Sterling goal is his fault. I think he got between Bellerin and Holding. But if you look back at the replay, he runs off Bellerin and gets close to Rob Holding, Rob Holding checks his shoulder and still doesn't deal with it. Still doesn't deal with it. He just he just watches him. He just literally watches him and doesn't react and then decides, oh, you know what? I'm not even going to jump. I'm not even going to jump. I'm just going to sit there and watch him score. And I don't understand why he made no effort to win the header. Absolutely shocking from Rob. This is the Rob Holding that just signed a new four-year contract, people. Just signed a new four-year contract. <clears throat> Why? Why Why did he get a four-year deal? What has he done to get a four-year deal? You know? Not good enough. Not good enough at all. I, I want to I wanna show you something on this, uh, on this video, if I can get it. All right. At this point here, right, I'm going to show you this. Because this just sums up Rob Holding. We're doing a Sky Sports here, people, before you give him, give Bob Bolden your ratings. This sums him up. I want you to, I want you to look at this, right, if you can see this. <clears throat> Rob Holden right here. There you go. Rob Holden is looking. He is looking over his shoulder here at Raheem Sterling. He can see him out of his peripheral vision. You can see his head turned. He's looking at him. He's made the run here off Bellerin. And I think Bellerin is looking here at Bernardo Silva, although he's steering at the ball. Mares is whipping up um, uh, Tierney over there, putting him to the sword. Now, let me just run it. Obviously, uh, due to copyright, unfortunately, you can't, you can't play it. Look at Rob Holding at this point when Sterling's about to score. Hector Bellerin's got his arms out. I, I don't know. What, is he pretending to be a tree or something? I don't know. I'll let him off on the fact that he's probably marking Bernardo Silva, although he's still probably too far away. What is Rob Holding doing? What is he doing there? Why are you staring at Raheem Sterling six yards out? Why? 
what what do what do you think he's gonna do? The ball's been crossed in and you haven't even moved. Why have you not challenged for that ball? You're bigger than him. You'd probably win that header if you got it. He's literally doing nothing. He's doing absolutely nothing. It goes over Pablo Mari's head. Bellerin's pretending to be a tree. And Holding's doing nothing. And even here, Leno's left too much of the goal open. But I'm not going to blame Leno. I don't think he can do anything about it anyway. That is absolutely woeful from Rob Holding. Honestly, there's no defending that. He is shocking. I'm telling you, he's, he's pretending to be a tree, mate. He's just sticking his arms out like that, Hector Bellerin. Rob Holding, for me, and I saw certain accounts trying to say that oh, Rob Holding played decent yesterday after the mistake. Well, I'm sorry, mate. It's a bit too late. It's a bit too late. You know, you've already cost us the game effectively. Um, so for me, I don't care what Rob Holding did after that. I'm giving him a two out of ten. Shocking. Shocking. You're not you you're a bang average defender, in my opinion. Bang average defender. The best defenders in football, they concentrate. Their concentration is the thing what makes them so good. Um, Anthony's giving him a five. I'm not, I'm giving him a two. Effectively, that mistake costs us a point. That that's how I'm looking at it. It costs us a point. If a centre back can't mark a simple player like that, a five foot six, seven player, um, you know, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. And they are not good enough, I'm afraid. Pablo Mari yesterday, would you make a Pablo Mari? I thought he was okay without being spectacular. Um, there was one point where Cancelo got the ball and done a little fake shot and he just sent him away. I would probably give Pablo Mari a five. What do, what do you guys reckon? You lot are going even lower, actually. You're saying three, Pablo Mari a four. What would you go for Pablo Mari? I don't think he did too much wrong. Um, but defensively, we just didn't look great. Uh, what are you giving? People giving Mario a four, a three, five is fair. Mario was worse than Holding. He did look shaky. I'm just kind of being harsh on, on Holding because I feel he costs us the goal. Four or five, you guys are saying. Hmm. Five, five. I thought he did okay. I thought he did okay. He did get spun a few times, though. He did get spun a few times, to be fair. I see him man turning him inside out. Um, and I see him give the ball away. I'm giving him a four. I've downgraded it. I thought he was poor on the ball. He gave the ball away. Let's go for Kieran Tierney, people. I know we, we're a big fan of Tierney, but I thought Tierney was poor yesterday, man. I thought... Mares spun him a few times. His crossing wasn't great. You know, it summed him up at the end. He just kicked the ball out of play. I thought that was one of Tierney's worst performances, if I'm honest. Um, you know? Remember when I was calling Pablo Mari squad fodder as well and, and someone was getting on to me in the comments saying he's one of our best defenders. I don't think he is. I really don't. But next to Rob Holding, it is going to look difficult. Um, Kieran Tierney, a three, a five, a one, a three. Um, worst performance for Arsenal, a three. I'm still laughing over the Bella Tree joke, I'm telling you, bro. Three. I would probably go along with a three. I thought Mares tore him to shreds yesterday. He put him to work. He had no fear of him. He was just turning inside out. Um, I thought it was awful. Uh, I think, you know, I won't question his commitment. But it was nowhere near good enough. Worst Arsenal game. Yeah, I, I, I would give Kieran Tierney a three. Um, off topic, but on this day in 2010, R9 announced his retirement. A true, re a true re legend. Big up Jay Torres with a super chat. R9, mate, my favourite striker of all time. What we could do to have someone even half as good as him right now. Uh, now, from R9, we're going to drop down slightly, people. Just slightly. To Arsenal's midfield. Now I'm about to I'm about to show you Arsenal's midfield, right? This was Arsenal's midfield yesterday. If you know, you know, people. If you know, you know, right? That's all I can say. This was Arsenal's midfield yesterday. <laughs> uh dear. Let me show you a picture. Here is a picture of Arsenal's midfield yesterday. For anybody who watched TV when they were younger, particularly in England. You will know who these two are. I believe one of these guys passed away as well. But, um, so RIP, by the way. 
the Chuckle Brothers, legendary TV comedians, uh, Granite Xhaka here and Mohamed El Nenny here. That was our midfield yesterday. That's basically, this picture here is basically what Kevin De Bruyne was staring at yesterday when he had the ball. To me, to you, to me, to you. That's what they used to say. And all these two basically do is say jokes to each other. And all El Nenny and Xhaka did yesterday is pass the ball sideways. Did the ball move forward yesterday? I'm not actually sure if it did. Two of the worst centre midfielders I've seen in Arsenal history. Comedy duo, mate. They, they should literally set up a, a TV programme. The Xhaka and El Nenny show, mate. You know, comedians. Absolute comedians, mate. I would probably have rather had the Chuckle Brothers in centre midfield. They might have made De Bruyne laugh and put him off. You know, I'm telling you. Xhaka moving like Mr. Bean. <laughs> Bro, 2021. Do you know how much stuff we're going through over the past couple of years? Pandemics, all sorts is going off in the world. And Arsenal turn up with a midfield of Mohamed El Nenny and Granite Xhaka people. What like what do we ex what did we expect to happen yesterday with them two clowns in midfield? What did we expect? I would rather have the Chuckle Brothers, man. Chuckle Vision was quality, bruv. Chuckle, Chuckle Vision, a Chuckle Vision. Bruv, that is relegation fodder, that midfield. That, literally, relegation fodder. Absolutely shocking. I don't know who was worse. People, give me your ratings. Who do you actually think was worse out of them two yesterday? Who was worse? Granite Jacob, rugby tackling people, getting yellow cards, saying I never touched him, ref. And then you've got Mohamed El Nenny um, just passing the ball backwards. All game. All game. You know? Who was worse? What ratings are you giving them to in midfield? I would probably give them. I don't know if I'd give them more than a one or a two. Xhaka was worse, El Nenny just average. I think I agree. El Nenny did what he says in it. I will get the ball, I'll run around, and I'll pass it sideways. I'm going with this. I'm I'm getting no, no, in fact, because I gave Hector Bellerin. I gave Hector Bellerin a two. I'm gonna give Xhaka a two, El Nenny a three. At least El Nenny runs around. Um, but they are absolutely shocking. They are they're just so bad. They just they were set up to fail, though, at the end of the day. When you pick that midfield, there's nothing you're going to get out of them. There's nothing. Xhaka was atrocious yesterday. He was atrocious. He was rugby tackling people. Mohamed El Nenny just passes the ball sideways all game. They would struggle to get in Sheffield United's midfield. Honestly, they would. Their man have got who they got Fleck and their man, they got decent little players. They are they are embarrassing. I cannot believe that these two are still at the football club. You know, I can't be I can't believe it. I can't believe we actually pulled El Nenny back from his loan and said, you know what, we're going to keep him. Mikel Arteta, by the way, made that decision. I can't believe that Mikel Arteta refused to sell Granite Xhaka to her for Berlin when he had the chance. Absolutely dreadful. Dreadful. The worst midfield partnership I've seen in my entire life. I would actually have Danielson back. And I used to moan about Danielson all them years ago, right? I would have Danielson back over these two. As someone said earlier, and it's the best comment, that is one of the best comments today, Gwenduzi and Torreira, both out on loan. That is a better midfield than the midfield we had on the pitch yesterday. Embarrassing. And listen, I always say this. The blame lies with the manager. These these two are not picking themselves. Everyone can see both of them aren't good enough. Mikel Arteta begged Xhaka not to leave and kept El Nenny after a loan spell. There's only one person I can blame for that midfield, and that is our manager. Trust the process. Trust the P-R-O-C-S. Mr. Lego Man haircut. The guy who is fobbing us off like a politician, mate. Shocking. Absolutely shocking, the manager. Uh, Martin Odegaard yesterday, people, thought he was poor, lost the ball, didn't really make anything happen, got into good little positions. The the true test is going to be in games like this. Uh, Odegaard, you played great against, uh, played well, should I say, against Benfica, but yesterday he wasn't good enough, didn't make anything happen. Uh, Mana calling him Arteta Roblox, that is a banger, bruv. 
Uh, I would give him a free for yesterday. I thought he was ineffective. He worked. He just didn't make anything happen. Didn't see any passes. Didn't see any shots. Didn't affect the game at all yesterday, Odegaard. Um, tried his best. Non-existent. Russ the process. That That's bang on. You know? Be excited, they told us. He was poor yesterday. I'll give him a free. I thought he did get bullied. I seen Fernandinho roughing him up at times as well. Premier League's a lot different. It was poor. Bring in the banner, guys. Listen, if I say one thing, and I say this to everyone, right? Everyone listening. No matter what you think about the manager, the players, everything that's going off at the football club, right? We, we'll have different views on different things. One thing we can all agree on as an Arsenal fan base, this football club is not being ran in the correct manner. I don't know if you saw my show the other day with Steve, the Man City fan. He just spoke about how much them owners care and did their homework and how much they've put into that football club. Can you imagine if Arsenal had Sheikh Mansour as the owner or Roman Abramovich, where we would be? We would be, we would be at the top. We'd be right there at the top. Our owner, and I've said this all the time, and I will always say this, Arsenal Football Club will never, ever, ever win the Premier League with Stan Kroenke as their owner. It is as simple as that. We will never win the Premier League with Stan Kroenke as our owner. Not a chance, will we? Right? He doesn't care enough. We think we're going to have this big summer because we've cleared all these wages and, you know, Ozil's gone, Socrates, now we've got all this wage. You still need transfer fees to go and buy top players. He will not spend the money in the summer. Chelsea spent £222 million in the summer and they're still not sure whether they'll get top four or not. Even if you put £100 million into this Arsenal team, I'm not sure if it gets top four next season because they'll go and spend another 100 million. So, yeah, we might spend, but they'll spend as well. This football club somehow and this fan base, I don't know how, and we have the arguments on social media about the manager, about certain players, but one thing that has to happen, when fans can go back to the stadium, we have to find a way collectively to put pressure on this owner. Now, I'm not saying we can get him out, but we have to try. We have to try and do something because I'm sick of it. I don't recognise this club anymore. You know, I don't recognise this club anymore. Um, yeah, Chuckle Vision, man, great show. This is why on the green screen, a lot of the time, you just see Omri and Burkamp behind me. I can't resonate with this team. I actually don't like most of the players that play for this team. I don't, I don't like them. Not just because they're not all great footballers, because they're not a representation of the fans on the pitch. The reason you support a football club usually is because you connect with a player or a group of players. You know, growing up, I loved Ian Wright. I loved Dennis Burkham. I loved Anelka. I loved Tony Adams. I loved Thierry Henry. You looked at them. You resonated with them. You, I can connect with that player there and I like him as a footballer. And the kit, there was something special and unique about this football club. This football club... They have ripped the soul out of it. We're just a shell now. We're just like one big shell. The Emirates is just like a theatre now to go and watch a show. And usually the show isn't even us putting on the performance. Soulless football club right now. And, and that's because of the owner. The owner doesn't care about the football club, you know. The owner doesn't care. He doesn't come to the games. He doesn't speak publicly. He doesn't say anything. He just throws Edu. Look, you've got Edu. Look at these guys. Edu Arteta. And Vinay. Vinay's never done this job in his life, you know. Um, Edu has never done this job really successfully. He did it in Brazil for a little bit and then worked with the Brazil national team. He's inexperienced. Mikel Arteta has never managed. They've been set up to fail. So as much as I've got a massive problem with this manager, and I don't believe he's the right manager, I have an, almost, I have a, an even bigger problem with the owner of this football club and what he's doing to this football club. And the way he's manipulating fans, you know, he knows that I can bring out another training kit and promote it. And and sometimes you can't help it, you know. Someone said to me in the comments yesterday, why did you buy the kits? You're supporting him. You get caught up in little traps, you know, at little times when the club's making you feel good. 
when we've just beaten Man United or someone like that. You have a feel-good factor about you for the next seven days until the next game. And sometimes, you know, you go into a shop or you're looking online and you see the kit and you think, I want to support my team. So I'll buy the kit. And the next minute you think, raw, I fell for the trap, you know. I fell for the trap, man. You know, I, I got I got caught up in it. This football club is soulless right now. I genuinely, I'm at a point, and I know I've said this before, I don't even want to wear the kits anymore, you know. I'm at the point, I need to go and find my old kits. I've got a bunch of old kits, um, the old, old kits that we had, and I just want to wear them. I don't want to wear these kits no more. I can't, I can't connect to this club no more. Can't connect to them. I, I feel like they rip the fans off. The the fans are the blood of a football club, in my opinion. Having played football professionally at a lower standard and, and things like that, the fans are so important to a football club. When a player leaves, they're gone, mate. The fan will still be supporting that club. They keep that club flowing and flowing and flowing. You've seen now, with no fans in the stadium, that that football's not quite the same. I, I'll be honest, I haven't enjoyed football anywhere near as much since fans haven't been there. I've got used to it because that's just what it is, but I'm not enjoying it the same way. And all they do now is manipulate this fan base. We've had more training kits this season than we've probably won games. You know, we've won 10 games this season. We've probably had 15 training kits. Look at the prices of them. You know, they're a ri they're rip-off merchants. I honestly cannot stand this football club at this moment. Honestly, I can't stand them. Can't stand them. I love the club. I love the club because I've had that connection since I was a kid and I'll continue supporting the club. But because of what the owners are doing with the football club, I can't stand the way the club's being run. I don't connect with it. I don't like a lot of these players. I don't like the manager. I don't like the owners. It's very difficult to connect to this team right now. We're almost becoming immune to losing games. You know, it does hurt. It bothers me, but I'm I'm kind of used to it. And that and that's even more worrying. That's that's even more worrying. That's why I argue with fans on social media because I'm saying no, don't accept this. Don't accept the fact that we're tenth. Don't get caught up in the PR publicity that we're going to go and spend a fortune in the summer and we're going to be fighting for the Premier League next year. We're not. We've been in this position over and over again. We've actually been in better positions than this. We've been in the Champions League with money to spend and still not gone and blown the transfer market away. So we're definitely not going to do it. Look what Stan Kroenke said last year. He said, we've got a Champions League budget with Europa League football. That tells you that we're spending too much. Now, we may not even have Europa League by the end of this season. So how do we suddenly think Stan Kroenke is going to go to Mikel Arteta? There's 200 million. He didn't even do that for Arsene Wenger, who was a club legend. There's no way he's doing that for a rookie. And I say this over and over again. I want a Mourinho or Ancelotti, right? Whichever one of them you think's right is fine. I get all the Mourinho slander. I understand it, right? It's fine. What my what my thought process was, we have to get a top manager in who knows how to deal with it. I believe they appointed Mikel Arteta because of manipulation. They knew they could manipulate him. They knew he couldn't knock on that door and make huge demands. How can you demand anything, Mikel Arteta? You're lucky to be here. That's how they're treating Mikel Arteta. You're lucky to be in the job. So he gets what he's given. Yeah, he wanted our in the summer, but you're not getting it because you can't demand it. Yeah, you're lucky to be in the job. Take what you're given. Take Willian and take, you know, you got Thomas Partey. That's all you're getting. Yeah, Everton went and fixed their midfield in one transfer window. They got those players at reduced prices because of the manager. There's rumours now that James Rodriguez was a free transfer. They didn't even pay for him. That's because of Carlo Ancelotti, former Real Madrid manager, has had a lot of success there. Madrid did him a little favour. James Rodriguez said himself he wouldn't have signed for Everton if it wasn't for Carlo. That's what a big manager can do. You know, that's what a big manager can do. Arteta doesn't have that pull. Edu doesn't have that pull. You're new in this job with an owner that doesn't care. And I'm, I'll be honest with you, people. I am seriously worried about this football club and the direction that we're moving in. I feel... I, I feel that we can literally become a mid-table team where this this isn't a, 
This isn't a one-off, in my opinion. We finished eighth last year. Okay, just above mid-table. The FA Cup covered over the cracks. This year, we're seeing where we're at. Substandard manager. Players that probably don't care enough. An owner that doesn't care enough. And now we're paying the price, people. Now we're paying the price. So listen, what I will say collectively, man, and I, and I will hammer home this message and big up man like Turkish as well, because he's constantly said this. When the fans can go back to the stadium and using social media as well, pressure has to be applied on this owner because he is, he is, it's criminal what he's doing to this football club. You're literally tearing down a giant. You're tearing it down bit by bit. And there ain't even anyone there to argue. He owns 100% of the football club. Our, our hope was Usmanov buying the club and the fans didn't get behind him enough. And he sold up and went to Everton. You know, Dan Gotti, I, I don't believe him. I think Dan Gotti just said it to get press. He goes, 2021, I'm going to buy Arsenal. I think he just said that to get some publicity. I don't think he is. So, listen. Anyway, people, there's the rant over. There's the rant over, but... I just think it's important people understand I'm not solely blaming Mikel Arteta. There is a far bigger problem and a far bigger shadow hanging over this football club than just the manager. And um, it's uh, it's sad. It's sad times. The, the emergency button should be getting pressed. The alarm bell should be ringing. But a lot of people think it's just going to change in the summer. It's not. It's not, people. It's not. And, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating because... Uh, we put a lot of effort into this football club as fans, you know, the emotion and staying up late to watch games, creating content, watching videos, buying merchandise. They don't understand what fans do for the football club. And they don't care, man. They don't care. And this is what I say. The captain ain't coming out saying nothing. The manager's peddling PR. You know, the owner don't say anything. It, uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. There you go, people. There you go. We keep it moving. I haven't even finished the player ratings. Apologies. Yeah, Bellerin called out Sanchez for being too intense and he wants to win too much. Weak mentality, weak players. Yeah, that's that's what we're dealing with nowadays, unfortunately. Lack of leadership. Lack of lack of it at the club. Soft, you know, soft football club. Big up John with the super chat. Thank you very much. Troops was the closest to confronting Kronke when he went to America in pre-season. This is the problem. How do you get close to Kronke? He doesn't come to games unless we're in a final. I don't even think he came to the Europa League final, you know? Oh, man. Uh, we went off topic. Um, big up for the Super Chat, by the way. Um... <clears throat> As I said earlier, this is it. Kronke isn't going anywhere, so we pay our money and make our choices. There has to be a time that we fight back, man. Owners have been forced out of football clubs before, you know. I genuinely believe the fans got Arsene Wenger out of, uh, of Arsenal. They left seats empty. Now, when seats are empty, that damages sponsorship deals and brands start saying, you know what, that doesn't look good what's going off at Arsenal. I'm going to pull my money out of there. That's when the owner started to listen. He said, hang on a minute. They're not accepting it now. We may have to get Arsene Wenger out. We have to have more energy than that towards the owner because I think everyone can agree that this is the wrong owner. Um, so we have to do something, people. Um, let's just finish off the player ratings. I went way off topic there. Um, Nicolas Pepe yesterday didn't have a good game, really. As I said before, the guy plays well against Southampton, scores. He plays well against Wolves, scores. He plays well against Man United, rips up Luke Shaw and them, man. Gets dropped for Leeds, gets dropped for Benfica. You put him in the team yesterday and you play him on the right when he's been doing so well on the left with Tierney at left back. He's never really played well on the right with Hector Bellerin at right back. Yesterday he was poor. I give him a three or a f no. Do you know what? I'm going to give him a four? He had no support from Bellerin. He shouldn't have been playing on the right. And I'm going to blame the manager. I'm going to blame the manager for Nicolas Pepe yesterday. He should have given him a better chance, but he didn't play well himself. So I can't give him too high a rating. Got dragged off after 72 minutes, and no doubt he'll be on the bench for Benfica now because Arteta will say, "See, I put him back in, and he didn't perform." But we all know why, bro. We all know why. Bakaya Saka on the other side, again, 
played on the left, should have played on the right, which is where he's been superb this season. Wasn't great yesterday, Saka. He was quiet. They doubled up on him quickly as well. I would probably give Saka a five yesterday. Worked hard, but was ineffective going forward. Um, not one of his better games. But again, you get the consistent work rate out of him. I would give Saka a five. Yeah, that pass to Tierney. No, there was a point he could have passed to Pepe in the first half. It got blocked and then he kicked it out. And I was like, come on, bro, you're better than that. Probably our most dangerous player, but I thought he was still not quite at it. Ah, oh, Skipper, Skipper, Pierre Emery Aubameyang. I have so much respect for Aubameyang because I feel the last couple of years we would have been in a crisis if it wasn't for him. But yesterday, no, 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 no. I cannot accept that performance. I can more accept what he did against Benfica than I can what I can except what I saw yesterday. No footballer misses chances on purpose, right? On Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, he actually played well in the sense that he worked hard, he led the line well, he got in great positions, his finishing let him down, right? So that's why I give him a low rating for his finishing. Yesterday, he was lazy, his body language was poor, he stood next to John Stones while he won headers and didn't even challenge, he got bullied by him, he had no fight about him, no grit, no determination. I don't know whether he's still got things going off in his head because of, the, you know, his mum's been ill and things like that. I don't know. I, I can't comment on that without knowing. That performance yesterday was atrocious. I'm giving him a one out of 10. The reason I'm giving him the lowest rating out of everybody in the team, because Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, really is the talisman for this football club. He's the captain, he's the star, he's the most expensive, he's the best player when he's on form. Let's be honest, Aubameyang is our best player when he plays well. And yesterday, he looked like he just gave up. He looked like he didn't want to be on the pitch. You know, where was the fight to go and have a battle with John Stones? Why aren't you jumping up with him? You get told as a kid, if you can't win the header, challenge him, put him off. Sometimes you might put him off and he misses it. And then to Stones just bullied him to the floor and just put him down on his back. And I never seen Aubameyang do anything to make life difficult for John Stones yesterday. Absolutely dreadful performance. And then as captain, no interview. Don't say anything. Just disappear up the tunnel. I have no respect for that performance yesterday from the skipper. Uh, I give him a one out of ten. That's the worst I've seen Aubameyang play. Yeah, he didn't get the service. If you'd have worked hard and got no service, I would have said that they didn't get the ball to you. And we know that Aubameyang requires service. Let's be honest. Aubameyang ain't an Alexis Sanchez where you can just give him the ball and he'll go and make something happen. Aubameyang does require service like Jamie Vardy does at Leicester. And I don't think we do create properly for Aubameyang on a consistent basis. But the lack of effort and determination... That is that is literally un, unforgivable, you know. I hope I listen. I hope it's not a Meza Ozil situation where he's got the bag and he don't really care as much anymore. You know, the bank account's overflowing with cash right now. Has the hunger gone out of Aubameyang a little bit? I really hope not. I really hope not. Substitutes you can't really. Lacazette came on seventy third minute too late. Should have come on earlier. Smith Rowe came on again. These two didn't really get involved. I give them a five. David Luiz came on for holding for the head injury. I'll give him a five. Ceballos came on with four minutes. I give all of them a five. They should have all come on earlier. Mikel Arteta yesterday, I'm giving him a one out of ten. I'm giving him a one. He gets the one because, number one, I don't know if he picked the right team. I don't know if he picked the right team yesterday. I don't know if it was wise to pick Rob Holding and Pablo Mari at centre-back, considering Gabriel and Luis have played well the last couple games. The midfield set us up to fail. The double pivot in midfield is one of the worst mid... The, in fact, the worst midfield I have ever seen at Arsenal. Granit Xhaka and Mohamed Elneny. Danny Ceballos has had two good games in a row. This talk of us getting him on a permanent deal cheaper. Give him the chance to see if he's up to it. Keep him in the team. Play him next to Elneny or Xhaka. But you take him out. Play Elneny and Xhaka. Horrendous. Horrendous decision. You played Nicolas Pepe on the right-hand side. Why? When he's had such a good partnership on the left with Tierney. 
and he's had joy out there. Sack has been sensational on the right, but you swap sides. Shocking. Why did you sit there for 73 minutes before you made a substitution? Yet Pep made a change after 60 minutes and they were winning the game. What was you waiting for? You know, why did El Nenny come off with four minutes to go and we could all see nothing was happening? What's the problem? You know, why are you not telling the team to go for it, go and win the game? Why didn't we attack with 20 minutes to go? 1-0 down with 20 minutes to go. Now release the shackles. Let's go now. I would rather try and equalise and lose 2-0. That's just me. I don't know if you agree with me, people. I would rather have attacked Manchester City for the last 25 minutes, trying to get the equaliser, and they may have caught us and got the second. I would have had respect for that. Sitting there and going, oh, we'll take a 1-0 defeat. That, for me, that is not Arsenal. That is not Arsenal Football Club. That ain't good enough, you know. 78 seconds, fastest knockout. Mike Tyson at his prime, mate. Come out, one punch, you're on your back, you're done. Didn't even go for it. What has Gabriel Martinelli done, people? Does anyone know? I just want to know. Gabriel Martinelli last year, we were calling him potentially the best youngster at the club. What's he done? How come he's... um? How come he can't get a kick? We give him a new five-year contract in the summer. He can't get a kick. What's happened? What has happened to Gabriel Martinelli? You know, why Why can't this guy get a run out in the team? The guy is, he was on the verge of being picked for Brazil. New five-year contract, all this hype around him. He's having games where he doesn't even come on. You know, he's been on the bench, just sitting there, just, just doing nothing. Someone will go and take him off as soon because of this manager. I don't know. I don't know where we're at right now, people. We play Benfica on Thursday. That is the biggest game of this season. Because somehow, and I and right now I would say it's not likely. I said Tyson via toddler. Somehow, Mikel Ortel, you've got to find a way to win this Europa League. There's no excuse. There's no excuse, bro. There's no excuse. You've got to find a way. I don't care how. Grind your way through Benfica. Let's hope the draw goes for us. Some of the big teams get each other. Maybe we get an easier draw in the next round. You find a way, Mikel Arteta, of winning this Europa League because this season is getting out of control what is going off. We are 10th. If Leeds win their game in hand, we go 11th. Bottom half of the table. 11 defeats. More defeats than wins this season is embarrassing for a football club of the size of this club. It's not acceptable. Big up Michael with a super chat. Curtis, the only way we can get Stan out or be heard in the Emirates with TV with TV and eyes on is the only way. It's in the Emirates. Oh, okay, I get you, with eyes on it. Yeah, well, uh, someone was saying in the comments that they're talking about fans potentially being allowed back in the stadium uh, in the next few months. Um was somebody just saying that that by April some fans may be allowed in the stadium? Uh, I will check that out after. But listen, once that happens and fans are allowed back in, there needs to be conversations had, I'm telling you, amongst the fan base. Stuff has to happen to put pressure on this owner. We're going to do it together. Trust me, people. We'll do it. We'll make it happen, man. I'm telling you. Enough infighting, man. Let's, let's, get, let's get going. That's great news for the fans. Great news. Um, and hopefully we can get in there. May 17th. The season will nearly be done then, right? Um, but probably the Euros. You would have to aim them really for, for pre-season to really. That's when the fans could all be there and try and put some real pressure on them. But no, definitely. Things have to be done. We, we have to. We have to turn the Emirates into a lion's den, man. Make it difficult for these owners. Um Bro, I want to support another club because I don't like what I'm watching, but I can't because I'm too attached. We're all at this stage. We'd all love to walk away, man, the way this club is going. But we can't, man. We're there. We're stuck, um, unfortunately. But listen, I appreciate you all tuning in today. One hour and four minutes of Arsenal therapy. I may have to start calling the, the show that. That's what it is on a Monday. Listen, we've got the Europa League game on, on Thursday. I will be doing another um, preview. Uh, I'll probably have Cristiano on again, the Benfica fan who came on last week. Uh, I think I'm going to try and get him on on uh, Wednesday and we'll we'll speak about the game again. I'll be back on tomorrow. I'll try and get a guest on tomorrow, actually, just to mix it up again. We'll look ahead to the week and, and see what news is coming out of Arsenal. 
thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, things can only get better, you know. Let's hope. Let's hope. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Smash the like button on this video. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll be back tomorrow, people. Bless. Oh, 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 oh,